Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Blaspheming Bite. Today we're going to keep on with our topic on recursion. Before we get started, I just want to say that you're going to see more of the board now. And that's because of this new cable that I brought, which basically extended how far away I can keep the camera, which is super great thing. Another thing is, I my friend gave me some feedback. Shout out to Nidin Rejoice from Calicut Keller, who said I should be talking a little bit louder. Okay, let's get started. The problem we're going to look at today is called the uh, palindromic decomposition of a string. I don't know why you have to make it sound so difficult. If you check out lead code, the question is called palindromic partitioning. So basically what you're saying is when you go through a string, find out every, create a partition whenever you find a palindrome, as simple as that. Now an example, let's dive right into it. An example would be A, B, A. Now one of the palindromic decompositions of this string would be A, B, A. Now for all practical purposes, you could say that A is a palindrome, B is a palindrome, and A is also a palindrome. But you could also say that A, B, A would also be a palindrome, right? So these two are the answers that we're going to get. A, comma B. So let's have a notation. Let's say we're going to say the palindrome decomposition would be something like A, B, C. The, let's call it partitioning. Decomposition is a big word. It's a fat word. I can't say it properly. So A, B, C. And then you have another one, A, B, and A. So this is what your output result should look like. Partition along. Now let's look at another example. And that should help us look at how we can do this in code. As always, I will put the code in my GitHub page, possibly my GitHub page. From today's class, I will try to point you to the leaked lead code question as well. It looks like that's very popular. I mean, if you want to test out your code, where do you go? Go to lead code, right? Now let's look at an example. Let's say we have A, B, A, B, and C. Okay, now I'm going to go directly into how we're going to do this. And then we're going to walk back and see how we can put this into code. Sounds good. How I'm going to do this is, I'm going to look at each and every character first. Okay, which means I'm going to look at substrings which have a length length of one okay so when i do that what do i get so this is when i look at let's say i start over here my position is here and i'm going to look at substring of length one and is that a palindrome yes that's a palindrome so what am i going to do next i'm going to add this to some string and then let's just put I don't know, something to partition the string, all right? Next thing I do is move my position so that it starts from the next guy. So if this were a recursive call, you would say position of right now that came into my function, just added by one, right? So position plus one. And you're still doing the substrings of length one. And then is that a length one? Yes. So you're going to add B to it, right? Next, you're going to continue doing this. I'm going to do one more and then I'll just fill it up the whole thing, okay? Your substring length is still one. What are you going to do? You're going to put an A there. And then you're going to do a B and then you're going to do a C. And then you reach position equal to, you reach position which is equal to 
the size of your input array okay so that remember this we're going to use that in our recursive formulation or recursive code because I don't do recursive formulations which I should probably do makes it easier to understand stuff but anywho your position when it reaches the size of the array that you've been given that's when you kind of stop so at that point what you're going to do is your result array you have to add this to your result array okay so that's the part where you've reached the end now let's do a little bit of backtracking okay keep that in your mind so right now my position is where's my position the position is here and the length that I'm looking at is just one okay now I come back to see and then I want to do a length of two is that even possible that's not possible right at this point is that possible no so I don't even bother doing that okay now is there any point in doing three four five because there's nothing there right you're just going to hit a wall and hit a goddamn wall <laughs> and come back so once you've reached that position like towards the end you don't have to keep going right? so let's go back now okay you come back you make position position is back to P okay and then what are you going to do you're going to see length of two because you've already done length of one and that's how you reach all the way till the end let's do length of two what happens when you do length of two now at this point you would not have you would only be till here okay you would not have reached your till the end so you're removing all that thing out of the substring so far so to say length of two and now you go and check is BC shout out to all my Indian BCs out there if BC is a palindrome what are we going to do we're going to add it here okay and then we're going to keep going but unfortunately it's not a palindrome so we come back and then we we go to where do we go go back to a we go back to a and then we check length of two is a b a palindrome so at this point you come back here and then you check is a b a palindrome no it's not a palindrome right and then you go and check length of three so what would that give you that would give you a b c is that a palindrome no so what do you do you change your position and so you get that out of the way and then your position is over here okay now let's check so position length one is already done length two is b a a palindrome no is b a b so You've exhausted doing two now let's do three now is B a B a palindrome yes so what are we going to do we're going to add B a B into the thing and then where do we move our guy we move our guy over here because we've already extinguished all of that guy okay so in your recursive formulation you would do something like pos i minus pos plus one so your position um, changes based on that sounds good and then what happens is you check c is c a palindrome so when you do that you're going to do length one again and so you get c okay now let's go back again go back to B again and then just for completion sake we're going to do length of 4 is B A B C 
A palindrome? No, it's not a palindrome. So what do we do? We go back to position A. We come back here. That's our position. Okay? At this point, we've already done one, so let's do two. Is AB a palindrome? No. So we go and check three. Now, is AB a palindrome? Yes, it's a palindrome. So what do we get? You get A, B, A, and then you put something like that. Okay? And then what happens? You go here, right? You pos sorry. Your position would move here. And then you do the one and two, and then you get B, and then you get C. And then at that point, you put that back into your array. And then let's go back. Okay, we are not done yet. Can we do, let's do length 4. What happens when you do length 4? A, B, A, B. Is that a palindrome? I mean, it kind of looks like a palindrome, but it's not really a palindrome. So it's not a palindrome. So we scrub that out. Oh, position was back at A, by the way. Okay, and then finally we do length of five, and we do, we get A, B, A, B, C, which is not a palindrome. So in this example, we got three guys. We got A, B, B, C, we got A, B, A, B, C, and we got A, B, A, A, B, A, B, and C. So those are the palindromic partitioning that we are doing here. Now, let's look at the code a little bit. The base case is kind of uh, simple. If you've reached the size, if your position is equal to the size of your array, what are you going to do? You're going to push the value to answer. Okay. Now, if that's not the case, you're going to do a for loop. Now, this for loop, the significance of this for loop is to check the size, to check palindromes for size 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from position, like i is going to start from position, and it's going to go all the way up to the size, and you increment one by one. Okay, so what happens here is, so let's say that your position is two, and your size and the value of i is two. So you will start with checking if the value, the substring, substring which starts at 2 and ends at 2 whether that's a palindrome and then in the next for loop you're going to check if the substring that starts at 2 and ends at 3 is a palindrome is a subset starting at 2 and ends at 4 so effectively what are we doing here here we're checking one length here we're checking two length three length and so on and so forth. So that's where, that's the purpose of this loop that's on the top. Now within that, you need to do something else, right? Once you remember when you found a palindrome, so if it's a starting, like um, my position and my i are the same value, I did find palindrome, so I want to shift my position. Remember, we were shifting the position of the guy, a, b, a, b, c, and I had put something called position here, and that kept shifting every time I found a palindrome. That's the important thing to notice here. So if the substring that is starting from I to pause minus I, sorry, I minus pause, 
Uh, starting from i to i plus 2i plus i minus 2i minus pause if is a palindrome if that is a palindrome then what do you do you're going to shift your position by you're going to call this helper function i just call it a helper everything is just a helper bloody help and the helper function will get shifted by position plus one so if i was starting at this position here and my length is one yes so this is a palindrome just move forward and then start your um, start start the helper function again starting from position plus one so you're just shifting it by one and then keep doing it again now that's pretty much it how you can do this question there's really nothing else going on in this question this is a medium question on um, on lead code uh, it took me a while to understand and be able to explain this to you now if you were given a simple question to just find all the palindromes um, in in a string that would be a pretty straightforward problem right so let's say given a b a b c i think it's time to buy some new markers a b a b c it's pretty simple right you start from this position and then you check for length one right and then so you get a b a b a b c you get all those guys and then you do length two starting from starting from here 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 so at that point do you have any buddy you don't have anyone right a b b b no then you go and do length three and then you do can this be a palindrome? Can this be a palindrome? Can this be a palindrome? And can this, uh-uh, no, we're out of bounds. So that would have been a pretty straightforward um, problem. So three things to keep in mind when you're doing the palindromic decomposition of a string. Number one, you need to reset your length at every point. So every time you find a palindrome, just reset it. And then keep trying to find uh, guys with length one and then guys with length two guys with length three and then just keep going like that that's the first thing okay reset the length to one when you find a palindrome that's one thing that you need to notice okay second thing push your position forward push your position by one whenever you find that you have a palindrome with you right now and the three third thing is kind of insignificant so i'm not even going to waste my time doing that is when you've reached the size you basically push it back into the result array now the code is going to be on github please make sure to check it out you can try it out on lead code pretty fun problem a little bit of um, thinking to get to where you want to reach to find the answer anyway hope you had fun have a nice day Hey everyone, if you like the video, please make sure to like, subscribe and share. Hmm. Um, there's also a GoFundMe page where you can go and fund my wife's dental school. And I would like it if you would donate anything, a dollar would be fine. Thank you.